I'm great. It's great to connect with you today. Thank you for your time. Thank you, Greg. Eleven, eleven. I love it. I love it. It's uh, that's uh, yeah. I try always to uh, to hit that time in the morning to see that on my display. Eleven, eleven right. is great. Right. Yeah. You kind of make a good wish, send a good thought out there. Right. Yes. I'm glad you see it. Um, congratulations on this. I found this film to be so enjoyable. Uh, I was pleasantly surprised. Uh, so you. congrats. Uh, and wow, to embody Frank the way that you do, the um, Millie Vanilli's manager is so powerful. You lose yourself in that role, I think. So can you um, share a little bit more? I, I believe you may have recently mentioned that this was a fantastic journey back to your own childhood. Um, how so? Yeah, um, you know, um, um, it was interesting because I grew up in the east of Germany and when uh, the wall came down and uh, east and west Germany reunited, um, it was exactly the time when that happened with Midi Vanilli. So for me, I, I kind of experienced it a bit later to be honest, I experienced it while prepping the film to to and um, but it was crazy to to understand that story, what happened there and what they did. And 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 it was a, it's I, I really thought, OK, it's good that we're making this movie because it's German history. And uh, and um, yeah, so I was very proud to be part of this film. Right. Yeah. Millie Vanilli were insanely popular at the time. Um, now, I understand you had a chance to talk to um, Frank Farian, who created the group and, you know, managed all that. Um, he passed away in January of this year. Can you describe what it was like connecting with him, I believe, over Zoom or, or a phone call of some sort? I have to say it was, of course, he was really interested. It was really nice. He was, uh, uh, um, I think it's always interesting and difficult at the same time to talk to a real person and ask him about this time which was a very difficult time um uh what is what he thought how he felt how you know how he was like how his life was what was real what was true so um it was a very you know walking on um what is it called glass or like ice uh you know it, eggshells Eggshells, yeah, because it was, uh, um, he was really nice, but of course I, I had to ask him, hey, what really happened? What, what, who, what, what's, what's your take on that story? What, what, what's the truth? And um, so I think I never, I never really heard the truth, but, uh, um, but he was, he seemed really nice. Oh, that's fascinating. So can you walk us through your process of embodying frank because um the character um and and perhaps the man himself obviously is uh full of a lot of energy he's very fiery he's explosive um so what was that like for you what did you want to bring to that character what was your process um I, for me it was very important especially the generation after when the second world war was over and then the generation of kids you know uh growing growing up in germany uh, what what were their big dreams what were their influence you know what did they want to do in their life and um i kind of really was interested in this character because he was a maniac and he loved music and he loved american music so and i kind of understood because i always as an actor or filmmaker my dream is still america you know to con to really to to be part of this American film industry, and I could understand that Frank was interested. Hey, if I want to make pop music, I need to. The, I would love people to listen to my songs in America or in the world. So I really understood. I really could understood that, and um, yeah. So I really focused on his dreams. That's that's what I started with when I started prepping. Okay, what's, what was what was what was his biggest dream? Right. Was it um, curious or challenging to shake off? Because he's so wound up. So like, how was that at the end of the day for you? I mean, um, um, <laughs> yeah, I, he, he was crazy. I kind of like, I kind of, I have to say, I kind of, I have a lot of respect for people. And if they go in 100% and want to do the best of the work, they, on, on is that right? The best of, of 
the best on their work. They're you know, the, the best of, yeah, I understand people who are 100% behind, you know, I want to deliver it the best I, I can. Is that right? Is that a right uh, saying? Yes, I believe you you got it. That's true. And and um and um so um I understood from a producer side, hey, if he wants to make the best songs in the world, do it. So he was his this this maniac thing I really liked. He he didn't he really took it very serious. And that's what I could that's that's yeah, that's um yeah. So I have to ask you, um, have you gotten the song out of your head yet? You know, girl, you know it's true. I I can't stop thinking about it after seeing the movie. Yeah, me too. And uh, I was on a show in America like two years ago, and uh, the host was asking me, "Hey, what kind of movie are you doing next?" And I told him, "Hey, it's the movie's called Girl, You Know It's True, uh, about the the pop duo Milli Vanilli." And he was singing every song, "Blame It on the Rain," "Girl, You Know It's True," um, and uh, and. It's crazy. It's there. Are, is it called ear earworm? Is that a right? Is that a saying when you when you can't get your, the song out of your head, like and you sing right. it all the time? Is it what is it called? It's do you, you just say I can't get it out of my head? That's what I think most people say. Uh, I'm not quite sure what the did you, yeah. I'm not quite sure, but people that's what I, we typically say. I think in America, you, you, the song just kind of like on loop. We can't get it out of our head, and yeah. now remembering all the songs that they came out with and um it's quite a spectacle because it, and ironic because we live in an era of TikTok now yeah everybody is lip syncing and performing and creating a certain image so can you talk a little bit about that i mean was that something that was also um, in your awareness and 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 with the cast as well while you were creating this yeah that was a big big um that was every day we've been asking ourselves hey now in these days people are performing on stuff but they're not the performers and um and and this seems you know and this is super okay because everyone knows hey this is not your song but you can perform it's amazing you can do like crazy dances and you will be maybe really successful but um um and that was a that was really interesting when we did the film because we thought it's crazy because why did Frank never tell the truth before they they sold the music to the world or showed the music to the world? Why why this never happened? Because um, now everyone is okay with it, you know, because it's it's They're okay with it. Yeah, it's yeah, it's, it's still the way we do things now. Yeah, and it's entertaining. It's it's entertainment and and. We like it. We love it. So why didn't they tell the truth before the train was running pretty fast? Right, right. Now, um, uh, one of the um, members of the group, Fabrice uh, Morvan, uh, is a co-producer on this. Did you have a chance to interchange and connect with him? Yeah. Yeah, Fabrice was really nice um, because... because to be honest, when when I was 1990, 1998, I was eight, nine years old. So uh, uh, even I was a, you know, I, I, even I know I was a young boy, you know, trying to understand this music and the music was cool. And then when I met Fabrice for the first time, it was so surreal because uh, I saw him, you know, on all these videos I, I, and, and um, but he was a wonderful very, very lovely, um, down to earth, heartwarming person. Um, yeah, and he, he was a really, really, and he was really, really open. He told us a lot of stories from his perspective and what really happened. And yeah, he was a really, really nice, he's a wonderful man. I love that. Thank you for, for sharing that. Uh, you are also attached to, uh, a, a, two interesting projects, um, The Life of Wishes by director Eric Schmidt. What oh, yeah. are you excited about with that film? Oh, I bought, that's, it's crazy. I bought that, the rights on that film eight years ago and then I wanted to shoot it by myself. And then uh, I started to do Army of the Dead with Zack Snyder. And then I did my Army of Thieves stuff and blah, 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 blah. So, and then I, 
I am, uh, was working on my career in America, but I never let go of that story. Uh, so I said, hey, we still have that wonderful story. It's about a guy who has, uh, who, who you know, he, a middle-aged man. He's He has, he wants to change his life. And the movie's about, hey, are you fighting for your dreams or are you still waiting to wish for something? And uh, and yeah, we shot it this year. It's a it's a very fanta it's a fantastic film. Hopefully, the people can see it in America when it's ready to go. And uh, yeah, I love that. So, what would you say would be your kind of dream role? You've starred in uh, a lot of high profile things like Oppenheimer, great role there, yeah. and uh, Army of the Dead, and other things. So, and now this, I think this is will will really strike a chord for audiences. But what would be your dream role? I love, to be honest, I love, I always have this, I, I love America, to be honest. And, uh, and I love that, you know, um, there are very wide horizons and, uh, and sky is the limit and you always allowed to dream big. And that's what I really love. You're always allowed to dream big. And, uh, and yeah, I would love to make and to work on more films as a filmmaker and an actor for the American audience. That would be amazing. Yeah. Who would you love to work with that you haven't? Oh, I would love to work with Robert Downey Jr. I really, really like him. Emily Blunt. I mean, uh, um, Timothy Chalamet. Javier Bardem. Denis Villeneuve. Denis Villeneuve. Again, Christopher Nolan. Yeah, these are mm -hmm. great, great roles. Yeah. Well, yeah, you never know because yet Robert Downey Jr. is now making headlines again as Doctor Doom. So, Doctor Doom, um, yeah, keep talking about that. You never know; you might get in that movie. So, that you'll see. Fun. Knock on wood. Knock on wood. Right. It's a pleasure to connect with you. Thank you so much for this, and your, uh, you and the rest of the cast are are really great. Just one last question for you: Can you describe? working with um, Tijan and Ilan in this, the two main actors, because they're fantastic. They really embody the characters. Yeah, they've been amazing, Tijan and uh, uh, Ilan. Uh, Ilan he, because it was their like first big, 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 big major film. And um, it was really funny because uh, Ilan is French. Uh, Tijan is uh, uh, German-based. So it was really funny they really connected in the way Robert and Fabrice connected. And sometimes you really thought it, I really thought it's them. It's crazy. So um, they're like true brothers. It's uh, and they, I think every day, you know, they, they really, they, they love the movie. They wanted to tell the story. They, they played their hearts out and it was wonderful to see that. Yeah, I agree. Thank you again. Congratulations and look forward to seeing your work in the future too. Thank you so much. Absolutely. Have a great day.